brewing here in Edmonton. The first of its kind, not just in Edmonton, but in North America. That's all we'll say, and we'll leave the rest to Jody. Please welcome Jody Calhoun Stonehouse. Thank you. Tanse Kapa Pamas Kamganaka Square, Natsika Sun, Otsinia, Michelle First Nation, Nia Hornashoni, Nehiawa Square. My grandparents, my great grandparents, and my great great grandparents all went to Indian residential schools. In those Indian residential schools, they were abused, they were tortured, and they didn't learn how to love each other, themselves, or their families. We have lots of mental health issues in our families, suicide, depression, lots of sadness, lots of trauma. Grand Chief Wilton Littlechild, who many of you may know, worked on the Truth and Reconciliation Commission as a commissioner. And he helped draft the 94 Calls to Action. And we see in our cities, across the nation, and in institutions, everyone's ready to check the boxes to reconcile. Let's do this, Canada, 150 years. Let's check those boxes. But when Indigenous peoples have Indigenous ideas about what reconciliation means to them, how are people supporting them? But we'll call in an elder. We'll talk about the land that we stand on. Oh, and we'll check this, we'll check that. Grand Chief Wilton Littlechild has this vision. He wants to bring the world together of Indigenous peoples. Because you see, resource extraction on Indigenous lands just doesn't happen in Canada. It happens all over the world. Missing and murdered Indigenous women just doesn't happen in Alberta, which we have the highest number of in Canada. It happens all over the world. So he has this vision of bringing the people together to dance in ceremony, to pray together, to love together, to run together, to remind ourselves who we are as Indigenous peoples, to remind ourselves of the beauty that we have in our songs, in our relationships to the land, in the way we say things in our languages, because in those Indian residential schools, and Alberta had the highest amount, we, we have the most amount of students across Canada, the most schools, which means we are the fractured, the most wounded, the most work in this province. And Grand Chief Wilton Littlechild imagines healing, mending, repairing, reconciling as with the World Indigenous Nations Games bringing Indigenous peoples from around the world so we can see ourselves reflected in their indigeneity. Because some of us have forgotten. Because the impact of those schools, those wounds are deep. The addictions are deep. The loneliness is deep. We have 30,000 children in foster care across Canada. That's more children than there ever was in the Indian residential schools. That means there's more Indian kids not learning their languages, not being with their family, not being hugged by their mothers and fathers, not learning their languages, not participating in ceremonies, not knowing who they are. That's why these games are coming here. They're coming to Edmonton, they're coming to Canada. As we think about 150 years, how do we change not only Canada, but the world? How do we reconcile? How do we have global peace? How do we love one another? We, we learn about each other, our cultural diversity. We celebrate each other, we lift each other. And that's the vision of these games. So they're coming here to Enoch Cree Nation, to Ermanskin Cree Nation, out of the four bands, out to Alexis and the Dakota Sioux Nation, you're going to see Indigenous people from over 42 countries. Canoe races, we're going to have spear chucking, there's going to be archery, all the things that our people did historically and still do. And we're going to compete and we're going to be fierce and we're going to hold hands and sing songs and we're going to invite all of you to come and hold our hands and sing songs with us so that we can remember our relationship as treaty people. Because when my chapan, Michelle, sat and signed the treaty in 1877, he didn't sit by himself. He sat in that circle with the commissioner and others. And he sat there and he signed that treaty. As long as the sun shines, the grass grows and the river flows. He signed that treaty to share these lands. 
And so we have to get back to that circle where we're sitting together because that was the intention that the, we're all treaty people, as Jacqueline mentioned earlier. We have a responsibility and an obligation to the lands, to the waters, to each other, and to our children. Raising the next generations is all of our work. Reconciliation is just not an indigenous responsibility. When my grandfather or my chapon sat in that circle, so did yours. So we have to do this together. There's a lot of work to be done, but we have to do the work because our wounds are so deep. It matters that we heal and that we thrive because we want to be alive well. Milpa Matsuin, we want to live our best lives and we want to live them together with you, with our neighbors and relatives. But we need your help. And so these games are coming here and we need help. It's a world-class event on a very tiny budget. <laughs> the federal government has yet to support. We have the world coming here. Grand Chief Wilton Littlechild, who wrote the calls to action. Every institution's ready to implement. But if anyone has a vision of what reconciliation could be, I think he might have some sort of inclination. So I'm here to ask you to put pressure on the federal government. Say, hey, how are you supporting these games on our provincial government, on our municipal government? And to each and every one of you, we need volunteers. We have people coming who don't speak English, and I don't speak very good Russian. I don't sp speak very good French. And if you do speak a foreign language, Portuguese, please come join us. Uh, this is our contact information. We would love to see each and every one of you out on the territory, joining us for the games, dancing with us, singing with us. You are all welcome to be a part of the games. So that is my speech on the World Indigenous Nations Games 2017, July 1 to 9. Hi, hi, Chimigwitch.